Hey, it's LSFD here today, and today I have the pleasure to have an interview with Jean-Marc, whom I've interviewed last year as he was also an owner of the 2022 Lexus NX 450H Plus, and we wanted to see his experience with the NX in comparison to where I live in Canada. That was a great collaboration, and knowing that he would be owning a 2024 Lexus LBX, I reached out for another collaboration. Since the LBX will not be coming to North America, but I do think that some people, some Canadians, will be interested on the LBX if it does come to Canada. Hopefully Lexus is hearing that. And it will be hard to get more details about it and being able to see it in person. I can't just go to a local Lexus dealership and have a look at the vehicle. But the LBX is actually a very important vehicle for Lexus in Europe and Asia. And I think it's great to learn more about it firsthand from a real owner. I also think that the tech you see in the LBX would most likely get its way into the upcoming NX refresh. Some of it you've probably seen the TX already as well. And being an owner of an NX plug-in hybrid and the LBX, you could get some comparisons between the two too. Hopefully Jean-Marc will be able to provide some of that information. So let's start. Hi Jean-Marc, how about give us an introduction of yourself and your Lexus experience. Firstly, thank you LSFT for inviting me for the second time for a discussion on your YouTube channel. My name is Jean-Marc, I live in France and today we will speak about the most European of the Lexus lineup, which is the new LBX. I have the pleasure to own one as the second car in the family since a few days. Our main car is an NX 450H+, which was the subject of our previous discussion about one year ago. The LBX version that we have is called Elegant, with the optional technology pack on top. It is a two-wheel drive model that puts it right in the middle of the lineup between the base models and the full options models. It needs to be reminded that the LBX is available only with one hybrid powertrain. It was designed primarily for the European market and, to my knowledge, it is not planned to be commercialized in North America, at least for the moment. And I also wanted to add one side note before we go further with uh, our discussion. I wanted to say that this discussion is not about another test drive. I'm not a professional journalist. I'm not a Lexus technician neither. I am just a user and we will speak about my personal point of view based on my experience driving several hybrid models from Lexus, of which an NX 300H that I drove for four years before the NX 450H+, which is currently our main car since two years, and several other models that I drove eventually. Thank you, Jean-Marc, for the introduction. So I think the first question and most people would actually want to know is, how does the LBX drive and how does that compare to the NX? Uh, yes, this was precisely my main concern because we are not used to three cylinder gas engines being adopted in any Lexus model so far. Uh, you know that the Lexus LBX shares the same platform and the same uh, powertrain as the Toyota Yaris Cross, but in the LBX, the powertrain was enhanced with an additional balance shaft for the three-cylinder gas engine to produce less vibrations. Uh, also, additional noise reduction has been uh, added as well. And uh, the overall power was increased from 116 horsepower in the Yaris Cross to uh, 136 horsepower in the LBX, uh, thanks to an optimization of the electric part of the powertrain and uh, to a new technology for uh, the traction uh, battery. After I could drive both the Yaris Cross and the LBX, I can say that these improvements really make a difference and offer a better driving experience and comfort with uh, the LBX, uh, as a matter of fact. So today, my first impressions driving the LBX is that I really recognize the Lexus DNA in terms of driving experience and comfort. It is very pleasant to drive. I could perceive that the latest generation of the hybrid powertrain brings significant improvements uh, compared to previous version of the Lexus hybrid models that I have driven in the past. As long as you use the LBX in its driving domain, 
which is definitely city driving or everyday commuting at moderate speeds. The comfort of the seats, the acoustic insulation, uh, the absence of vibration of the gas engine give a very nice atmosphere and a premium feeling. On the other hand, long journeys on highways above 130 kilometers per hour about 80 miles per hour, for example, is um, definitely less its comfort zone. But with the Annex 450H Plus as the point of comparison, it is obvious, in my opinion, that the LBX is a step down uh, from the Annex uh, for uh, long road trips. Thanks for giving us your insights on how the LBX drives. My next question is something that many NX owners believe that the second generation NX should have gotten at first launch, and that's the 12.3 inch instrument cluster. And that was part of the refreshed RAV4 and other vehicles like the GX and TX also got it. We know that the LBX also got this instrument cluster. I really want to get your take on it, since you've also owned the 7 inch cluster on the NX. So what do you think? Yes, this 12.3 inches fully digital instrument cluster is really the most different feature of the LBX versus the NX, and honestly, it is absolutely excellent. It is very flexible and can be totally customized to your preferences. You can see in this animation that you can choose between three types of layouts that are accessible in the main configuration menu. I personally have chosen the type 2 that you can see here. And then on the left, you can select either the ref counter dial here or the hybrid dial here. I personally have selected the hybrid dial that is currently displayed. Then, after choosing the type, there is a multi information display concept that you can also customize in three parts. For that, you have to use the left hand side steering wheel keys with the arrows. This animation shows how you configure the left side of the display first by pressing the left arrow. So you can scroll through the various options with the up or down arrows and when you see the option you want, like the energy monitor, for example, in this case, you press OK and you go to the center using the right arrow. Then again, you select the option you want in the list, like the map for the navigation system, for example, press OK and then right arrow again. And finally, you can select here, for example, the audio source in this case and press OK and you are done. This is the customization example of the instrument cluster which I am using personally. One more interesting detail with this new instrument cluster is the indicator for the brake lights that you can see here in action either when you press the brake pedal or when the system automatically applies uh, some braking like with the proactive driving assist or the dynamic radar cruise control for example. With that you know when the brake lights turn on at the back of the car even when you don't press the brake pedal. In my opinion, the fact that you can completely customize the instrument cluster is a very nice feature and it makes the LBX appear much more advanced than the NX on this particular point. I'm really looking forward for uh, this dashboard being adopted in the future versions of the NX and probably other Lexus models. One word, wow. I can tell you that if the NX actually started off with this, I would say the NX would have blown the competitors even further. But now with this seven inch that we have, it's okay, but definitely not to today's age. I know some people will prefer actual dials rather than a digital screen. And there are concerns if the digital screen goes out, you don't know what you're driving and what speed you're driving. There's a lot less things you can do but there is definitely a lack of customizations. And I really hope that the next generation or the refresh NX will be getting this, and I think they will. This is the trend that they've been going anyways. So then my next question, what did you find any differences between the infotainment systems on the NX, the 14 inch screen that you have, compared to the LBX, the 9.8 inch screen that you have on the new LBX? The infotainment system is almost the same as the one that was introduced on the Annex since the end of 2021, with only the 9.8 inches screen available in the LBX, and there is no option for the 14 inches screen. 
And here I mean the same when comparing it to the European system, which is different from the North American system, mainly for the navigation and the radio. The appearance of the infotainment system is the same, but the version of the underlying software of the LBX is different. You can see here the list of modules with the respective versions that we have in the Enix after the latest update that we got in Europe in February 2024 and in the LBX. Um, all the connected services are exactly the same. Even the mobile app, so Lexus Link Plus uh, in Europe, are exactly the same between the Enix and the LBX. And I'm now thinking about one final detail, if I can say. Android Auto is still wired only here in Europe, although CarPlay is wireless. Same situation as is uh, in the Enix and also in other models. I still have no clue about the reasons for this situation being still current in uh, 2024. Great to see that it's actually not that big of a difference. But definitely when you look at it, this, the form factor is definitely different. And I still prefer the 14 inch one on the NX, but it may look too big on the LBX. But as with the wireless Android Auto, I really don't know what it is, but I've heard rumors it's regarding Google and the EU having some legal and some something in regards to that that's causing not having wireless Android Auto. It's something with legal or privacy issues with wireless Android Auto. Don't know why Apple got around it, but seems like Google and the EU still haven't resolved that issue. Follow me on Instagram at lsftvideos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. Are there new features that have been introduced to the Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0 on the LBX compared to the NX? Well, uh, the LBX has received the same Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0 with no downgrade. It also includes the latest uh, additions like the proactive driving assist and the predictive driving functions, as well as the driver monitor alert. These functions work exactly the same way in the LBX as in the other models. Apart from that, uh, there are a few modifications that are specific to Europe on some of the existing LSS Plus 3.0 features for regulatory reasons. The, the main one uh, being the access speed warning, which is now enabled by default at each startup. However, it is still possible to disable it manually for the moment. This illustrates the evolution of the driving regulations that we have here in Europe, which is not specific to Lexus and is progressively implemented on every new vehicle. So in summary, for everything related to technology, the LBX is equipped almost the same way as the other models of the same generation. And the fact that the LBX is the smallest model of the Lexus lineup does not impact significantly its level of equipment, which I think is a very good thing to note. It's great to hear that the LBX doesn't compromise any of the safety systems that we found in the NX. And for such a small car, safety systems are very important. So when we talk about the NX and the LBX, so in the context of an N NX as a reference, what is your overall assessment of the LBX? Well, the LBX is a very endearing little car and a true Lexus at the same time. You can really feel the comfort. You can really perceive the overall quality. The presentation is flattering. Hopefully we will also observe the same reliability as with uh, the other Lexus models. 
Compared to the NX, the LBX is obviously much smaller, as a matter of fact, which uh, makes it nimble and practical for everyday commuting. However, its powertrain will show its limits on uh, motorways and on long trips. In my opinion, the LBX is really an excellent choice for a second car, but if the LBX would be your main car though, be aware that the level of luxury and silence is a level below from what you can expect from a larger sedan or SUV, although you still would feel a premium driving experience. So the LBX is not available in North America. So definitely Lexus has done some research thinking that this LBX does not work for North America. For yourself, who do you think? Who are the target audience for the LBX? As I said, the LBX is excellent in the context of city driving, um, short distance trips on secondary roads, moderate speeds. It is a small car that you can use ideally for everyday commuting. I think this makes the LBX ideal as a second family car, as I said. And if you are in this situation, which is exactly the case of my own family, you should really enjoy the LBX, I think. On the other hand, I think that the target users for the LBX don't necessarily include every Lexus drivers. In particular, those who drive for long road trips, for example, and expect the same level of comfort as with the sedans or SUVs. I've done my questions, and I think, is there any additional findings that you would like to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, one aspect we did not address so far is the fuel economy. The LBX seems to be very efficient in these regards. After the first 150 kilometers that we have driven so far, we are at approximately 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers, corresponding to approximately 50 mpg in the USA, which sounds really promising since the car is still in its running in phase. And uh, regarding other details that I have observed, I would mention the case of the close and lock function of the rear door. And I take this particular example as there are lots of debates about this function with the second generation NX. With the LBX, the intelligent close and lock function that we know in the NX is disabled by default. It means that when you press the close and lock button, it instantly closes the rear door and locks the car without any key detection protocol, without the need to walk away, and of course, without the possibility to wait for 30 seconds to take you know, some stuff in the trunk, for example. And you can enable the intelligent close and lock function with a personalized setting that can be done at the dealership. As a reminder, on the second generation NX, it is the opposite. The intelligent close and lock function is enabled by default, and those who are annoyed by this function can uh, request to disable it with a personalized setting at the dealership. There are other small details that are not proposed in the LBX, like there is no kick sensor to open or close the trunk with a foot. Uh, also, the keyless entry system with the sensitive door handles is enabled only with the front doors, at least with the elegant version. I'm not too sure about other versions. Uh, and also, the air vents inside of the cabin are implemented only uh, in the front. But other details have been improved with uh, the LBX, like the windshield wipers that are equipped with uh, washing nozzles directly mounted on them so that the washing products is sprayed directly from the wiper. However, I didn't have yet the opportunity to test it in reality. And uh, finally, the LBX is delivered with two keys. Very good news for the users, I can tell you. Other differences can be noted concerning the driving controls. There is no sport mode on the elegant version. Only the normal and the eco modes uh, are available. Uh, on the elegant version still, uh, there is no S mode and no steering wheel paddles. There is only a B mode instead. I remind you that the B mode corresponds to a unique transmission ratio that is designed to increase the engine braking instead of several transmission ratios that can be selected sequentially when you use the S mode or uh, the pedals. And a final detail about the tires, the LBX is mounted with 18 inches rims with normal tires and a repair kit. 
we are very happy that there is finally no run flats on the LBX. And there are several other small differences depending on the versions, but uh, the one that I've described are the main ones I think are the most interesting to mention. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, you. You've definitely given a lot of insights on the LBX and we could potentially see what is upcoming in the NX refresh as well. I hope all viewers enjoyed this video and if you're interested in providing your views on your Lexus, you can reach out to me and we can see how we can collaborate as well. Thank you Jean-Marc, drive safely with your new LBX and hope that the NX won't be left at home too much. Thank you very much LSFT. I hope that uh, this point of view was informative and uh, helpful and for me it was a pleasure to have this discussion with you again and I'm looking forward to our next collaboration. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please comment, like, share this video and if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.